In this video I would like to demonstrate several ways of feeding mobile robots with electric energy. Let's start with Curiosity Pie, a tiny robot driving on my attic controlled through a browser interface. The central control electronic of the vehicle is a Raspberry Pi. That single board computer needs a supply voltage of 5 volts. The servos used for drive and steering need a supply voltage ranging from 4.8 to 6 volts. Thus, a voltage source with an output of 5 volts fulfills the requirements. If the target area of the robot is limited, the electric power can be drawn from an external power unit through a bifiler cable. An old computer power supply is used here. To avoid the robot from getting tangled up in that cable, it is running from the power supply to the ceiling and down to the rover. With the anti-twist mechanism, the robot can drive in circles continuously without damaging the cables. Two sliding contacts are needed for ground and the positive supply voltage. The breast tube with ground potential is running through the upper copper ring, insulated by a stripe of duct tape. If the distance between power supply and rover is very long, there is a noticeable voltage drop across the cable. While we can detect 5.07V at the power supply, the reading at the robot is just 4.79V if the Raspberry Pi is turned on but without running servos. If the servos are turned on during operation, there is an additional voltage drop causing the computer to quit working. In order to reduce the voltage drop across the feed line, cables with a larger diameter have to be used. Now, the decline in potential is just 0.15V, even when using clearly longer cables than before. As a disadvantage, thick cables are less flexible, which restricts the mobility of the tiny robot. In order to compensate for the voltage drop across the thin cable, a higher operating voltage can be used. There is also a plus 12V output at the computer power supply. But caution, that high voltage would destroy the Raspberry Pi and the servos immediately. Thus, a fixed voltage regulator with an output of 5V is placed between the power pole of the robot and its electronics. Because of the fact that the linear regulator dissipates approximately 3W of electric power during operation, a large heatsink is needed. Curiosity Pi has a second voltage regulator with a smaller heatsink for the servos. The diodes are used as protection against wrong polarity. With that arrangement, the rover can discover its tiny universe using thin, flexible cables. This is my first home-built rover, driving around the RoboSpatium since June 2011. Its central control unit is an EduBook, operating with 12V. The servos and the electronics connected to the USB port need just 5V, thus two different potentials are required. The current collector at the top of the vehicle is made of three copper rings. Number 1 for plus 5V, number 2 for plus 12V and number 3 for ground. That rover is bigger and has more motor power, thus cables with an adequate diameter can be used and no voltage regulators are needed at the power pole. Another way of bringing electric power to a mobile robot is using rechargeable batteries. Once more, a Raspberry Pi controlled rover is used for the demonstration. This one has four wheels. Five nickel metal hydride batteries, each with a nominal voltage of 1.2V and a capacity of 2.1Ah are used as voltage source. 
5 times 1.2 volts give a total potential of 6 volts. The freshly charged battery pack has an output voltage of more than 7 volts. Again, a voltage regulator has to be inserted between battery pack and rover electronics. The current drawn by the vehicle ranges from 400mA to 1A, thus the battery pack can supply the robot with electric power for approximately 2 hours. When using a linear regulator, the power dissipation caused by the Raspberry Pi and its peripherals is approximately 0.8W, which is the limit when operating the regulator without a heatsink. The servos are connected through a diode directly to the battery pack. In order to operate the robot 24 hours a day and 7 days a week, power rails can be used to feed the rover with electric energy. 12mm white metal stripes are fixed at this base plate, with a gap of 28mm between them. Rails with ground potential alternate with plus 8.5V rails. The polarity at the input of the robot electronics must be kept constant, which is why a special arrangement of sliding contacts and diodes is needed. At least 5 round sliding contacts arranged on a circle and 10 diodes will do the job. If that arrangement is pulled over the base plate, at least 2 sliding contacts are connected to 2 different metal stripes at any time. With the diodes, the polarity at the input terminals of the electronic board doesn't change during movement. At the animation sequence, the positive terminal is always located to the left and the negative terminal to the right of the load. Several requirements have to be considered when using that arrangement. The gap between the metal stripes must be slightly larger than the diameter of the sliding contacts, or else they will shorten two stripes. The width of the metal stripes must be larger than the gap between two sliding contacts. The outer diameter of the circle the sliding contacts are arranged on must be large enough so that three metal stripes can be touched at once. Instead of massive metal stripes, you can also use two thin cables with a distance equal to the width of the metal stripes. Less visible but more complex to manufacture are multiple contact points that are joined at the reverse side of the base plate. I am using perforated metal stripes that are easy to tacker on the wooden base plate. When using more than 5 sliding contacts, the gap between the metal stripes at the base plate can be enlarged. That makes the arrangement work properly even with the poorer engineering tolerance of the base plate. Those 6 sliding contacts with 12 diodes can supply the robot with electric power, in theory. Across the diodes and metal stripes, there is a noticeable voltage drop of 1.83V, thus the voltage applied to the rails at the base plate must be higher than the input voltage needed at the rover electronics. As shown before, there is a voltage regulator at the board of the robot. With the multimeter switched to continuity check, you can hear that there is no steady contact, because the surfaces of the metal stripes and the sliding contacts are not ideally plain and clean. A computer attached to this system will crash, thus a better solution is needed. Large capacitors or batteries can be used to buffer electric energy. Whenever the connection to the external power supply is interrupted, the robot is fed with electricity through the batteries, discharging these buffers. If the connection to the metal stripes is re-established, the robot is powered through the current rail system and the batteries get recharged, 
that process is indicated by the green LED. A microcontroller observes the charging procedure to avoid damaging the batteries during operation. It's a very complex system, but it enables a continuous operation of the robot 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. Another advantage of the system is that the rover can pass gates and tunnels. Stay tuned or have a look at the project page to see why I have built that robot with its special power supply system. Some later I will show another way of powering mobile robots, photovoltaic cells. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!